Hi there, my name is Jason Gilmore. I'm the president of the Dauphin Rail Museum and just wanted to take a moment to uh, give a little context of the reason for this um, video you're about to see. So 2022 is a, an extremely important year for both the Dauphin Rail Station and the Dauphin Rail Museum. So uh, this year uh, commemorates the 110th anniversary of the construction of the Dauphin Rail Station by Canadian Northern Railway in 1912 and also signifies the 20th anniversary of the um, formation of the Dauphin Rail Museum. So many people may not know that um, the rail station that you see today was not always in this condition. Uh, in the mid-90s it was vacant, uh, dilapidated, uh, and there was talks of it being demolished. So fortunately uh, a couple of community members um, got together and wanted to save the building given its historical significance to the area. So, um, and you can see uh, an interview that I did with both uh, Jack Schmunn and Jim Steiner on our YouTube page in regards to that topic, but um, they obtained a provincial heritage building status, so that was important. And then also uh, the help of the, the Canadian federal government, which was approaching uh, the millennium year 2000, and they had a millennium project that had a lot of funds earmarked uh, for saving uh, historical uh, structure so that was really important as well so um, so the, the building itself was constructed by Canadian Northern in 1912 now the original station in Dauphin in 1896 was a sm much smaller building uh, closer to Main Street just east of us here um, in CN Park um, and they've done a great job in uh, placing a commemorative plaque there and also you can go and there's a concrete pad in the formation of the foundation there but um, Canadian Northern upgraded its facilities and services as revenues justified so for $38,000 uh, they built this current station and you know, it was such a, a substantial and attractive building. It was an expression of the confidence in the town's future in not only agriculture, but a divisional point on the rail line. So as in many prairie towns, um, Dauphin owes its location and early physical development patterns to the coming of the railway. Um, and this station marks the terminus of First Street, a location described as quite literally the nucleus of Dauphin a point from which springs the town's layout of streets. So um, truth be told, like every time I see this building, um, I find something different aesthetically, um, just from a, a knowledge educational standpoint. Uh, I never take this building for granted and I don't think people in the area should either because it's a very unique structure. So with that, uh, I, what we're gonna do is have a, uh, a tour with um, longtime CN employee and current board member Jack Schmunn and we're just going to go around the building itself and indicate when this was a fully functioning rail station who would have been in each section of the station and, and what went on so please enjoy.
name is Jack Schwann. I worked in Dauphin for CN Rail. I was an electrician. I worked here from 1968 to 84 when I transferred to Thunder Bay. So this station is Canadian Northern, built by Canadian Northern in 1912. A survey of the station to show you uh, all the uh, people that worked in here and at one time this station was full of people. Uh, there was maintenance way here, train dispatchers, engineering, express department, and of course the baggage department. Uh, we had a full, full capacity in here of people. So Jack, where we're standing right now, can you tell us, it wasn't the, the green space that it is today, uh, what was actually where you're standing right now? Well, where we're standing is where the parking lot used to be, not, this was parking for passengers coming in. And, and uh, people wanted to drop stuff off at the station, we had the express department, and over the far end there, that's where the, we had a fence where the officials parked their vehicle. And over in the far west of here is the, uh, where the people parked for the, uh, that worked here. We had a big parking lot in there where you can see right now. And then actually looking at uh, old pictures as well, there used to be a, a, a First World War or uh, the World War Cenotaph right where we're standing. Did you ever see that in person or? Do you recall that? I recall it, but when I moved here, it had been already moved to Memorial Boulevard. Which is a shame. It was a, a great spot for it, for sure. Yes, this is the spot because in the, at wartime, all our pilots and people trained here, and it, this is where they traveled on. They took the train to wherever they were going out of here. All right, Jack, so we are standing now at the east end uh, of the, the Dauphin Rail Station here. So um, let's go inside to um, where the current rail museum is and just talk about what was in that room. So we'll follow you first here. Okay, this area in here was the, this is where the baggage room was. The, uh, of course, those doors, they used to bring the wagons in here. There was a platform level with the doors. They would bring in all the baggage wagons or people coming in on the train to check their baggage. They would come and pick it up at a, you know, later that day or whatever. And in here was also the Canadian National Telegraph. So you can see the sign up there, which we thought. But the telegraph office just come back here about, oh, I don't know, I'd say 10 or 15 feet. And that was the, that was the telecommunications. Then they got their own building and moved east to here. It's now in, in where Health Basics was. That was our telecommunications building, which is no longer there. Everything's done by MTS, I believe now. And going down this way, This area in here was the waiting room. They had uh, the waiting room, and then right about here was where the ticket, uh, ticket office was. And they had a train operator sitting in there. Maybe not, it's in the next room, I believe. But this is where the ticket office was, and uh, they always had an a agent working in there. And then this was quite large, and as we go down this way... And it, actually, before we go further, I, I recall um, you and, and uh, Jim Steiner talking about this big staircase that went upstairs that they removed during... Um, the renovation just due to, I guess, uh, 
new laws with handicap access and such and, and an installation of the elevator, correct? So where approximately would those have been? They're, they're back in here. So they are further? They're okay, further. sorry. So the, we'll, yeah, the renovations for the, uh, they had to bring everything up to fire code and uh, the, the big thing was that you had to keep the exterior of the building into the into the original state. So that's why everything's done, everything done outside has brought the station back to its original uh, area, our area of brickwork and everything. All right, so we've made our way a little bit further kind of west on the first floor here of the building. So what can you recall was in this area of the building, Jack? Well, this area here was also part of the waiting room. And then in, in this uh, particular area, there's a bow window outside, which you'll see later. And that's where the train operators sat because it's a bow window so that you, you can see the train locomotive numbers from either direction. Cause he he would copy the orders for the from the dispatcher upstairs which we'll tell you later now that's all prior to extensive radio use too like oh, yes. that's why that, that would have been when we had telegraphs and yeah that's all we had we didn't have radios in this day yeah. not day and age so real interesting an ode to the past right so yes all right let's go further okay this this room come right up here and beyond here uh, they had, uh, this was where the communi uh, not communications room, basically the uh, yard clerk, uh, they, this is where they kept track of all their trains. This was full of people. There was, you know, and we didn't have, we had telexes in those days, not computers. Everything had to be typed out and, well, and done that way. So this is all vastly different just yeah, from the remodel, this, correct? This came down to here. That's uh, ceramic, but we can't go in here. Okay, it, this, from this area on, this was where the engineering function was. They had draftsmen in there. They laid out track layouts. They don't do it buildings, but they had the, uh, they would do track layouts and stuff for the section crews. And that was all engineering. That whole place was full of engineering people, draftsmen and whatever, draftsmen and whatever they had in there to work. So once again, a lot of folks, a very busy place. Uh, it was in full operation. This station was full of people in 1968 when I moved down here, mm -hmm. and I believe they shut her down in 1990. So you were probably close to a high point, and then that from yes. that point it kind of declined. I was over this is called the Hudson Bay area. We had our everything, well, we're going to go, we're not going upstairs, but we're showing from the outside where everybody was located. Gotcha. All right, Jack, so we are once again outside standing uh, on the north side, north face uh, of the Dauphin Rail Station. So we're going to look at the second and third floors now. So if you can kind of briefly go over who occupied those floors. Okay, well, on the second floor, about where we're standing, about the middle, to the east end was all handled by maintenance away. That's where they had their staff. Well, actually, engineering function. They looked after all the north end from uh, Dauphin to Churchill, Lynn Lake. Uh, we worked as far west as Humboldt in this territory. And on the west end was where we had the train master, superintendent of transportation, superintendent of equipment, and our area manager had an office up there. And the third floor, that's where the dispatchers were. Because in those days they had 24-7 uh, train dispatching here in Dauphin. Quite busy with trains. This is in the days of the steam engine. And the third floor was where the dispatchers were. So once again, far different from just the private lease office space that currently resides on those floors. Right. All right, Jack, so uh, we're still on the exterior now uh, on the northwest corner of the rail station. So just review again from the exterior who occupied what spaces. Well, this space right here was occupied by the express department. These were the guys that handled the money and anything of value that came express that was well guarded and it was in here and it was always locked up. 
And the only people that could get in there were the people that worked for the express department. And I would imagine that uh, they were all checked out before they went in there. So was there any uh, CN police yes, station we had, here? we had CN police here. We had one constable, the one that I recall is Art Jones. He was here and then uh, he got transferred out of here. I believe he went to Vancouver and uh, he was uh, he retired, I believe, out of Vancouver. But they would have been heavily involved probably with things of value, correct? Uh, correct, yeah. If they needed them, they would come down here. And uh, But your express messengers were armed. They had their own... Uh, Revolvers, so yeah. The one on the train and the, the guy that worked in here, if they were involved, a lot of cash with checks would come through. All your CN paychecks would come here, and the express department would handle them. And then, like it's with mail delivery, things of that nature. Was that well, well before mail, your time? Mail, or? No, mail was brought in, but they uh, they loaded that mail into all the bags would be taken off and taken down to the baggage room, and then the post office would pick them up. Right so there. that wasn't necessarily express related. No, no, okay. No, no. Okay. Good. So here we are standing uh, trackside now outside uh, the Dauphin Rail Station. And um, so we're just going to go through just from this side some of the doors and where they were located um, on this side of the building. So we'll start at the west side there again with those doors. So that was Express, correct? That was Express. Then the, the uh, engineering, that's where the draftsmen were. And up to here was where the, this is where the train operator sat and waiting room of course the waiting room went to the other side of those doors and then of course we had the telegraph and the bank room. all right jack uh we wanted to kind of feature this kind of unique element of the uh track side on the first floor here of the, the dauphin rail station so explain again what this little outcropping room is well, these are bow windows that's where the train off operators stuff. He was the, the guy that copied all the orders for the conductors and engine men. And this was like this so he could see the trains coming in, pick up the numbers of the locomotives and then they would, what they do, clear them here because this was a terminal. These guys would roll in here and when they rolled in off the Gladstone sub, they're entering the Togo sub. So all their train orders are changed. And of course the crews changed here. So was uh, this unique to like a larger rail station like Dauphin or did a lot along the all, way? A lot of them had bow windows. Okay, just yeah, so they could, just for that uh, just element. Just for that purpose so they could identify. Because mind you, this was the terminal, so the trains were stopping here and changing crews. Very interesting fact. Thanks uh, again for your time, Jack. Can't put thank you in the bank. So we're currently uh, trackside of the Dauphin Rail Station, and, and just talk about like current day. We have one <laughs> one main line. So back in the day, how many how many sets of tracks we have, and what other types of buildings do we have behind here? Okay, where you see the uh, source for sports right now, that is that old building was Western Grocers. They used to bring reefer cars in here with groceries in them and they would park them there and of course they unloaded them there. And we also had five elevators in here. Here, There was four tracks. So for those that don't know, what is a grain elevator? That's where you put grain, right here. Yeah, but and uh, we had five elevators, unfortunately they're all gone. And we had four sets of tracks. That main line is, hasn't changed, but we had we had trains coming in here that they, uh, we called them station tracks. And this was the main station track here that they'd bring in the trains, and that's the main line now, which we see getting going to get rebalanced. But uh, that was all five elevators in here. That was the old Western Grocers, and. Beyond that, on the left-hand side, was a freight shed where no frills are now. 